Friday, good morning. The committee on parole is going to be called to order for an administrative hearing on Keith Thompson, DOC number 19223. And you are, uh, you're here to speak on Ms. Thompson's behalf. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Sarah O'Brien. Okay. Sorry. My name is Sarah O'Brien. Yeah, we can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. It's not working. Oh, now we can hear you. Oh, great. We can hear you now. All right, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. My name is Sarah O'Brien. I'm a uh, attorney. I'm the attorney on behalf of uh, Keith Thompson. Okay. And um, I wanted to just provide some brief reasons um, in favor of Mr. Thompson being given a rehearing. Um, he has completed over 38 years of this sentence. He's 60 years old. Um, he did, he's done several programs, uh, Thinking for a Change, Anger Management, 100 Hours Pre-Release. He also mentors uh, younger inmates on how to use yoga and calisthenics to um, overcome mental hardship. Um, he applied originally in 2006, and he decided he would not reapply until he had taken to heart and put into practice all the things that the board said to him then. He is reapplying now. Um, as far as I know, he hasn't had a single write-up since moving to DCI um, in over two years, in fact. Uh, he works as a healthcare orderly there. Um, and he also has a solid re-entry plan, um, a lot of family support, and also um, he has the support of, of me and my team of re-entry um, advocates. All right. Mr. Mayor Bell, you... I do have a question. I, I noticed in his application he shows that he has 314 disciplinary write-ups is that true um i haven't counted the exact number but there were a lot of write-ups earlier in his time yes and i feel his last one was on april the 30th of 2021 which was a rule three and a rule five um i believe yes i saw the last one would have been around that time in 2021 before he moved to to dci <laughs> Yeah, quick, but yeah, Mr. Freeman. Uh, yeah, uh, real quickly, I see he has a battery on a correction officer in 2019. Yeah. Also, uh, yes, he um, he that's part of the reason why he didn't uh, reapply at that time. He um, had uh, a disagreement uh, with uh, somebody at Angola, and um, when they moved him to DCI, as we can see, he hasn't had a single problem since then. Um, and I think that that move has a lot to do with that. Um, also, just him taking really taking to heart some of the things that he spoke about um, with the warden and the psychiatrist um, before he moved. Okay. All right. Panel good. I'll vote first. I'll grant him a re uh since he had that right since uh, 2021, since he moved to DCI. Mr. Mayor Bell? I'll grant him. I, I'd like to hear more about him at his hearing. And Mr. Freeman? I could go. All right, three votes granted. He'll be granted to rehear. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. All right, have a nice day.
The media on Pearl's call to order today is August the 29th, Tuesday, 8.24 a.m. My name is Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Maribella, Tony Maribella. Mr. Pete Freeman will be a panel staff and support seat at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. With staff and support, please introduduce yourself. Carla Williams, Whitney Trump Square, Denise Everett. <laughs> All right, uh, our remote location of St. Tammany Parish Correctional Center with staff and support at St. Tammany. Please introduce yourself. Corporal Jonathan Lott. All right, Corporal Lott, ready for our first case. Right. Please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Cheyenne Hoover, 732-856. Hey, Cheyenne, we're here for a parole revocation a hearing. Will there uh, be some rule violations? You can plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, not guilty with a statement. We'll ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, yes, sir. Cheyenne Hoover, DOC number 732856. Cheyenne, can you read and write? Yes, sir. Uh, so, all right. We'll start off here, 3A. You verbally admitted to Deputy Mandy Spell with the St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's Office Registry that you were living with your boyfriend, Aaron Lee, at Julie, on Julian Drive, Lacombe, 620, 630, 2023, 71, 2023, 72, 23, 74, 23. You reported that you would begin staying at your sex offender approved residence at 404 Jefferson Drive, Slot L, on 75, 2023. How do you plead to 3A? No, not guilty. Not guilty, all right? 3B, you stayed at an unapproved sex offender residence on Julian Drive in Macomb on 7-5. This is evident by your GPS device location. How do you plead to 3? Guilty. 3B, three, three guilty, all right? Uh, 3C, you stayed at an unapproved sex residence on 7-8 and 7-9 by your GPS. Uh, guilty. Guilty, all right. That's 3C. 3D, you stayed at unapproved sex offender residence at Julian Drive, eight nights out of 11 nights since your release on 7-30-2023. How do you plead? Not guilty. Not guilty. All right. Number 4A, on or about 7-11, you tested positive of drug screen of amphetamines, methamphetamines, MDMA, oxycodone. You verbally admitted to using methamphetamines on or about 7-9-23. How do you plead? Guilty. Guilty for a 4B and 13A special conditions, sex offender contract, owner about 711, special specialist Everly conducted a manual search your cell phone. You received you reactivated your Facebook account on the email Cheyenne Michelle29 gmail.com. Its Facebook account was registered with St. Ted Parish Sex Offenders Office. This is a violation of your sex offender contract. This is a violation of LARS 15. Five four two one four failure to register and notify sex offender or child predator. How do you plead? Guilty. Guilty. That's four B and thirteen A and four C and thirteen B. Sex offender also uh, contract also located in the search was the account uh, mega personal personnel dot eu under your email address. Shy Michelle 29 at gmail.com. Account not registered with the St. Tammany Parish Sex Offender Office. Violation of sex offender contract. Violation of LS LARS 15542 1.4. Failure to register notice by sex offender and child predator. How do you how do you plead? Guilty. Guilty. All right. Would you answer, Mr. Maribella, please? Ms. Hoover, my name is Tony Maribella. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, Ms. Hoover, you pled basically guilty to all of the charges, a few of them you did not. So tell me why you violated these rules. I mean, you knew the rules. First, let's the talk about the sex the last, offender rules. The last one, I didn't know that I had to register this website. Okay. I, 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 I can see that it's, no. it's confusing. I've read. Yeah, it is I, very confusing being a sex offender and not knowing what, you know I, what I'm saying, I, what I, websites I agree, we can't. I agree with you. I, I agree. Like uh, what websites we can't use because they don't tell us. Okay, All they tell us is our Gmail. Let, let, okay. let, let's back up a little bit. Okay? Let, 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 I'm not so much concerned about that because I think you're right. It was a little confusing. I'm going to tell you the two things I'm very concerned about is number okay. one, you are required and you knew you were required to, to tell us where you were at all times. 
And you were doing drugs. Listen, I tried to get a hold of my peers. Wait, 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 wait a second. And you were doing that's drugs. Nice. And I understand that, and I and I pleaded guilty to that, and that's my well, this is my first okay. time. Listen, well, this play- is my very first time messing up on parole, doing drugs. Because last time I was on parole, I didn't mess up at all. So why did you mess up this time? Because my best okay, my best friend just died in August, and I realized I come home, I come home. Five, I'm not gonna lie. One hundred five. I'm not gonna lie. Like I'm gonna be very honest. Like yeah. my best friend just died in August of last year and I came home and relaxed. Okay, I accept that. Well, let me tell you what my suggestion is gonna be for you. After like, I really wanna do it, like, I really no. do it. Like, if y'all can, if y'all can help, like I've been, uh, Mr. Roxanne from Volunteers of America, she evaluated me to go to a rehab. She's trying to get me a new rehab. Let, let, okay, let, let Mr. Maribel finish and then we'll Ms. give Ms. it Let Let me tell you what my suggestion is, okay? I'm not, my vote is not gonna be to revoke you, but my vote is gonna be that you go to our long-term drug facility in DOC. And as soon as you finish that, you'll be back out. So that's okay. 18 months, Acceptable right? to you? What is that, like 18 months? No, it's like about six, seven months. I agree with that. I can do that. Okay. Like I really want to, I really want to help myself. I was uh, on Vivitrol. Listen, I was on Vivitrol when I came home. Like I'm a heroin addict and I was on Vivitrol. I've been on Vivitrol since March 17th of 2023. Ms. Hoover, I understand that and I appreciate your acknowledging that. So that's all, right. all the questions. Would right. you like to make one brief statement by yourself to, to us, or uh, we kind of um, have an idea what we want to do? Like, which, what, what kind of statement you want to make? Like, okay. Just uh, if you want to make any type of statement. If not, we're going to vote and tell you what our vote is. Um, I, that I just want to go home and do right and be, be able to stay on parole and do what I have to do to stay clean. Okay. I really want to help myself. Okay. That look that like nice. I really want to, and I also got another question for y'all because my sure. people told me to ask. Go ahead. Um, I have kids, and me being a sex offender, I have to go through y'all. I have a two year old that that's in that's in state custody right now, and um, the people that have him, they want to know what they have to do to get be for me to be able to see him physically. Right. And my PO told me to go through y'all. She's not going to help me at all going through y'all. I don't know what I have to do. Last time I did that, I messed up on parole. That's the reason I messed up on parole is because I went to see my kid. How and I don't want to have to have that same mistake to happen again. Listen. Yeah. How, how old was your victim in the original offense? 14. I was 18. Okay. And it was a, a, a male? Yes, it was a male. Okay. Was he kin? Were they kin to you? No. Okay, I would vote to add the condition that she'd be able to see a two-year-old son with supervision. And listen, wait, I, only, I have an eight-year-old too. I have an eight-year-old too that my mom has. Okay, okay. your children. Your children. Yeah, my children, period. We'll, right. We'll, we'll add that for We're going to add that for All right, All right. All right. thank Pam, you so much. Pam, the vote? Yes. All right, Mr. Marabella. My vote would be uh, in lieu of revocation that she be, uh, that she go to uh, long-term inter- in, in custody treatment at uh, Steve Hall and that we had a condition that she be allowed to visit with her natural children know. with supervision. Mr. Mayor, females can't go to sleep. Okay, well, a long-term, a long-term drug. We still a long-term, long-term drug. Long-term drug. Yeah. It, it, it's, yeah. And, be, and then allow... Uh, Something similar to that. Right, that's correct. Inpatient okay. treatment. Sure, all right. Mr. Uh, Freeman? Uh, I concur, and I also... Uh, Vote on adding a condition that you see your biological you children okay? with supervision. All right, two votes uh, in lieu of revocation. Also, I'm going to vote to in lieu of revocation to send you to long term substance abuse program. So here's your opportunity. So you said you want an opportunity. So here's your opportunity. You're either going to get better or you're not. So you Why? you need to try to do right because next time you're not going to get this opportunity. We're also going to I appreciate, I appreciate we're also going to add stipulation that you have visitation with your biological children with supervision. Three votes in little revocation. Good luck to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Going out to Charlie. 
Hoover's retired. I right, state your name and DOC number for the record. You're on mute. All right, now go ahead and state your name and DOC number for the record. Scholar Jenkins. Yeah, I brought this. Okay. You, you grab it. Go ahead. Can you hear us? Scholar Jenkins. Go ahead. Scholar Jenkins. DOC number is 555 929. Yeah, we need to have that. All right, Scott, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me, oh, along with me is uh, Pete Freeman and Tony Marabella will be your panel. We're here for a parole revocation hearing. We'll ask you some 
rule violations. You can plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement or not guilty with a statement. Yes, we'll ask the questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Skylar Jenkins, DSM 555929. Can you read and write? Yes, sir. You have a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Uh, no, sir. You see that right there on the board there? Is that your signature? On yes, sir. Screen? Okay, great. All right, Skylar Jenkins, DSM 555929. Number four, on or about 6 20, 2023, you tested positive on drug screen for MDMA, methamphetamines, amphetamines, marijuana. How do yes. you put it? Guilty. Guilty. All right. Number seven, yes. owner about 620, 2023, you failed to answer all questions directed to you by parole officer when you were asked about your drug use. You only admitted to marijuana use. You uh, On 2023, you tested positive to drug screen, MDMA, methamphetamines. You admitted to purchasing an Adderall pill off the streets after your wow. urine test yielded positive test. How do you plead to rule seven? Yes. Uh, guilty. Guilty. Yes. Guilty. Uh, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't hear you right now. I, okay, it's, it's, you can't hear, okay, I'm going to try to speak a little louder. Yes, sir. All right, number 10, you owe an arrears bounce of $391 towards your supervision fees. How do you plead? Uh, guilty, but the, the fees are paid up, sir. Okay. They, they paid them up right after I come to jail. Okay. Special conditions 13, sex offender contract. Agent Hemingway and Agent Newman found you in possession of two pairs of little boy's shoes, approximately toddler age. You verbally admitted to contact with your girlfriend's minor child four. You say that you've been, you were attempting to fix the shoe for the child. You signed the sex offender contract and have the juvenile victim. You are advised that you could not have contact with juveniles unless the parole board allows contact. How do you plead? Uh, guilty with a statement, if I can. Guilty with a statement. All right. Number 13. Wait, we'll let you have a statement. Yes, sir. 13B. On or about 6 20, 2023, you verbally admitted to having contact with a minor child. Agent Hemway, Supervisor Bo, presented during the, was present during the mission. You attempted to lie about having contact with a child. How do you plead 13B? Guilty. Guilty. All right. Uh, answer, Mr. Rebell, please. You, had, you said you wanted to plead guilty with a statement uh, about the uh, four-year-old child. Go ahead and make your statement. Yes, sir. Uh, well, the, I, the, the shoes was found at my house. I don't I don't live with my girlfriend because my dad has a strict rule of no visitors. I stay at my dad's house. I'm home every night, according to my, my parole officer. All right. The shoes were not his shoes. They was my girlfriend's shoes from when she was a kid. We found the shoes. We was cleaning out the bedroom at her house. She doesn't let, have. Let me let me stop you, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, sir. Part of the reason why you're here is because you lied to your parole officer. Right. Yes, sir. Two possibilities of me voting today. One of them is to try to help you. The other is just to revoke you. Yes, sir. And my notes reflect to me: if he lies to me, I'm revoking. You. Yes, sir. So, either come clean today, or. You're going back to prison. So yes, sir. That, that, that's completely clean. The shoes were at my house. My PO showed up about 6 30 that morning. I was fixing the shoes. They was my girlfriend's shoes whenever she was a kid. The soles was come completely off. I had the hot glue gun plugged up that morning when she got there. She seen the hot glue gun. It's it's the, the uh, child. Tell 24. me about the second when you pled guilty to. My, sir? Tell me about the one you pled guilty to where you had contact with the minor child. Because I told if, if I was hanging five robbed wire in Franklinton. Well, that night we had to run from the Wendy's all the way to the McDonald's across right in front of the bridge. And we had we worked all night that night. Well, I left and went by my girlfriend's house. She lives in Varnado. Instead of going back to my dad's house, I went straight to her house and went to sleep at five. Well, she don't have custody of her son, but she gets regular visitation. And Miss Jennifer will just bring him over there whenever. Well, when I woke, I got there, went to sleep. Whenever I woke up, he was there. So I walked outside. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm nervous around him. I don't stay around him. He's not, he don't live there. It's not, nothing like that. You know what I mean? I don't intentionally see him. I've cut his as hair before. Offender, as a sex offender. Yes, sir. You're not supposed to go and sleep at other people's houses without notification. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Well, uh, yes, I mean, I'm not, you were not, not supposed to be sleeping where you were sleeping. Yes, sir. She has a child, 
That child came over there. That's the whole reason for the provisions. Yes, sir. And that's and and as far as the child's, you know, being around him, I, well, I cut his hair. It was on me completely. I didn't. I thought as long as there was an adult present, that I was okay to be around a child. That is not very clearly, your restrictions include that. No, no contact. I read whenever Miss Alicia and Miss Newman come that morning, I pulled my diminution of sentence out and looked at the back of it and seen Tell my contract. About drugs. No. That started about two months after I come home. I started hanging fiber optic wire. I, I had never hung, I had never climbed no light pole, first off. And when I finally got up there, I realized there was a lot more to it than just climbing a pole and setting a lasher on, on some cable. So I couldn't really focus once I get up there. I get nervous about the power line. So I started eating Adderall. And come to find out when I was buying these Adderalls off the street, they wasn't Adderall entirely. It was just capsules full of amphetamines. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Do you understand my concern about you're doing drugs yes, sir. and being around minor children? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Now, my alternative, I've got two possible votes. You tell me what you want me to do. No, I can I vote you because you have violated your conditions of parole. Yes, or I can yes, vote yes. to send you to a long-term substance abuse program and then let you back out. What do you want to do? Uh, that's uh, whatever y'all feel is, is necessary for me, sir. I'm I'm I'm, I'm at, completely at y'all's discretion. If I want, to, I would like to be put on a GPS track monitor. If that if that's you know if we could do that, you know that way my PO would know where I'm at at all times. I, Maybe an option as well. Okay, that's all. Any other questions? All right. Uh, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Um, I just I I, I know that y'all have heard everything, so I mean I'm not going to come to y'all with any type of lies or anything like that. I just hope that y'all can judge me not for this violation. It's my first violation coming in front of y'all. It will be my last. And I just hope that y'all can judge me mercifully and allow me a chance to fix any type of problems that I have with my family as far as this is concerned, me being in prison. All right. Now I did 13 uh, years and, I, and I, I, I wasn't prepared when I went home. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, I took re-entry. I went home with a with a, with a, a degree that I took at Ashland University, and uh, I, I wasn't prepared. It was a lot, and it, it just hits you all so fast, you know. Okay. I was working. I couldn't get all a work right. pass to to go uh, do Alabama uh, storm work with my company, right. so I lost my job. That's all right. Too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a vote, Mr. Mirabella. Yes, in lieu of revocation. Uh, he will do uh, complete the Steve Hall program, and then when he's finished, add the condition of electronic monitoring. Okay, Mr. Freeman. Uh, my vote is to revoke uh, due to his pleading guilty to the violation. And my vote is to uh, to revoke your parole as well to pleading guilty to the violations. Two votes to revoke, one to uh, in lieu of revocation. Your parole's been revoked. Good luck to you. We'll adjourn at 8.48 a.m. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Well, do, do, am I eligible for any type of administrative sanctions? You've been revoked. You can talk to them there. Thank you.
Neil Broscott, order day is Tuesday, August 29th, 852 AM. My name is Brennan Kelsey, along with me is Mr. Pete Freeman, Mr. Tony Mabell will be panel staff and support us at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is St. Bernard Parish Prison. Is there any staff or support in the room with you? Yes. Would sure. staff and support please introduce yourself? Staff and support, please introduce yourself. Hey, good morning. I'm Deputy Moyer. Thank you, Deputy. All right, ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Um, Raheem Lewis, 588-300. All right, Raheem, you heard the introduction. We're having a parole revocation hearing. I'll, put, I'll read some, some rule violations. You plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, or not guilty with a statement. We'll ask some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can take the next statement, take a vote. You understand the process? That's mm, now. That's it. Raheem Lewis, DOC number 588300. Can you read and write? Mm, yes, yes, sir. Do you have a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Um, no. no. Put, the, put the parole revocation questionnaire on the screen. All right, you see that? Is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. All right. Raheem Lewis, DOC number 588300. Rule number two, you failed to report to Georgia probation. Pro probation officer has directed as your whereabouts were unknown since 12 26, 2022. How do you plead? How do you plead? Not guilty. Put him back on the screen. Uh, on 11. 17, 2022, you were successfully transferred via interstate compact and as a result was under supervision of the state of Georgia. While in Georgia, you were non-compliance and absconded supervision. On 12, 26, 2022, a warrant was issued for your arrest by Cobb County uh, for domestic violence, battery, visible harm. You left the state of Georgia without permission of your supervising officer in Georgia as evidenced by your arrest on 5, 2023, in which you arrested in St. Bernard Parish in Louisiana. How do you plead? Hold on, what? How do you plead? Hold on, say it again. Listen to what I'm saying, okay? Yes. <clears throat> on 11 17, 2022, you were transferred to, to Georgia. You were non compliance and absconded. On 12 26, 2022, there was a warrant, with, warrant issued for your arrest in Cobb County for domestic, abuse, domestic violence, battery, visible harm. You left the state of Georgia without permission. Your supervising officer, as evidenced by, on 5 2023 your arrest in St. Bernard Parish. How do you plead? Not guilty. Okay, so you didn't get arrested in St. Bernard Parish. You didn't leave the state? Yeah, I got I got arrested down here. So I, I guess I plead guilty. I got arrested down here. Yeah, you want to. I'm just asking, you, did you get arrested in St. Bernard or not? Yes. And, and did you leave the state of Georgia? Yes. Okay, I'll just ask you, you say not guilty, we're going to go with it. <clears throat> Number four, you failed to refrain in criminal conduct as, as and was arrested by St. Bernard Parish Sheriff's Office on 5 2023 for resisting arrest by failure to identify. How do you plead? Guilty. Okay, number four, you also have an outstanding warrant in Cobb County, Georgia for domestic violence, battery, visible harm, for a warrant issued out of Georgia on 12 26 2022. How do you plead to that? Not guilty. Okay. Probation and parole were not able to visit your residence or place of employment due to your absconding supervision and your whereabouts were unknown since 12 26 2022. How do you plead? Not guilty. Okay. You failed to make a single payment towards your supervision fees and currently owe $378. How do you plead? Guilty. Okay. Right now, explain to me. Go ahead and explain to me how you you're not guilty for leaving the state of Georgia and getting arrested. You said you now you admitted that you did get arrested in Saint Bernard and you okay. did leave the state. So explain yeah. that to me. All right. So when I was in Georgia, right, um, my kid mother had put charges on me. So when she put charges on me, she put me out the house. You know, when she put me out the house, 
And my parole officer down here know that I was leaving the state of Louisiana because I was trying to make a change. I was working a job when I, when I make it when I made it to Georgia because the parole officer in Georgia let me move to the well, give me an interstate compact to the state of Nebraska, and I was working for this company called Honeywell. Right. So when I'm when I come back home for Christmas, she put a charge on me and she put me out the house. So I don't have nowhere to go when I was in Georgia. So, so did my, you tell your parole officer you're going back to New Orleans? Did I tell my no, because the, I never got in touch with my parole officer yet. My boss, she put me out the house. I had to get someone to come pick me up out there in Georgia and make it back to the state of Louisiana. Why did you didn't call your uh, parole officer? Why I didn't call my parole you know, officer? Say, hey, look, I got kicked out the house. I got a problem. Because at the time, I was, I, I, at the time, I really was going through a lot because it, I'm not making the excuse, but at the time, I really was going through a lot. I was messed up by me just coming home and trying to make a change for my family and for someone to do me this. Like, I I, I, I was scrambled at the time. You weren't leaving because it, she pressed charges against you and trying to get away from the warrant because you have an outstanding warrant still. Oh, no, I wasn't leaving for that. You know, I was I left because I that I didn't have anywhere to go. Okay. I didn't have I, I, anywhere to go because at the time that she, she, had, she had got in touch with my parole officer and got in touch with Cobb County and let them know that she lied on me. Okay. All right. Would you like to make a statement on your behalf? No, 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 sir. I think you, you, your full term day, when's your full term day? Um, October the 8th or something like that. October the 8th, October the 13th. It's something like that. 2023, right? Yes. It's coming up. Okay. I, look, I vote to revoke your parole today. Um, you, you have a full term date that's coming up. You, you did leave the state of Georgia without, you know, you can't do that. You know, once you get on on probation, you know, and look, I, you know, there's some questionable things about the uh, the uh, domestic violence. You're right. She did. We, we can't say she did. It didn't happen. I mean, we don't really know what happened or what happened. But but you did leave the state. You absconded. My vote is to deny, uh, to revoke your parole. You have a, a full term date shortly, Mr. Maribel. Likewise, same vote. Mr. Freeman. Same vote. All right, three votes to revoke your parole's been revoked. Good luck to you. We'll adjourn at nine o'clock at St. Bernard.
you know, Committee on Frost Call to Order today is Tuesday, August 29th, 9 6 a.m. My name is Brendan Kelsey. I'm all with me is Mr. Tony Marabella. Mr. Pete Freeman will be a panel. Staff is four to see the DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is Bozier Parish Maximum Security with staff and support at Bozier. Please introduce yourself, staff. Yes. Sergeant Todd Roberts at the Bozier meeting. We have him over here today. Okay, we're ready for our first case. Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan. Morgan. All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Jason Morgan, 400 560. Hey, Jason, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Tony Marabella. Mr. Pete Freeman will be your panel here for pro revocation hearing. Read you some rule violations. You plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, or not guilty with a statement. We'll ask questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes. And you have uh, Mr. Jason Morgan here to speak at the appropriate time. Brittany Morgan and Jim Morgan speak uh, briefly at the appropriate time. Jason Everett Morgan, senior DOC number 400560. Uh, can you read and write? Yes, sir. Uh, do you have a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? Uh, yes. What's on the screen there? Is that your signature at the bottom? Yes. All right. Here we go. Jason Morgan, DOC number 400560. Rule number four. All right, go ahead and switch it back, guys. Rule number four. You committed the offense of second-degree battery. Cruelty to Juvenile 5-4-2022 and was arrested by BCPD. <laughs> According to the office report on 5-4-2022, you are intoxicated and on drugs at your arrest. On 6-15-2023, BOS hashtag 243-287, you pled guilty to criminal mischief and was sentenced to 90 days of Paris jail. How do you plead? Sir. How do you plead to that? Um, uh, I'd like to plead guilty with a statement. Yeah, but you got to plead something with a statement. You, you say guilty was okay. Guilty was statement. Gotcha. All right. Uh, number 10, you are in the arrears $945 in supervision fees. How do you plead? Um, guilty with a statement. What is face man? All right. Go ahead and make your statement. On the, on the, uh, the second degree battery and the uh, uh, child, whatever the child charge, I did, I did, I did not hit anybody. That's uh, every charge I've ever had. I played guilty to, I accepted even the charge. I did. I, I took forty years for. I played guilty to it because I did it. This charge I didn't plead guilty to because I didn't do it. Yes, I was drunk and I was on drugs, but I did not put my hands on anybody. On the the fines that uh, my pro fees that I'm behind on, that's all, all the ones I'm behind on is why I've been in here, why I've been incarcerated. How long you been incarcerated? Eight, uh, 17 months. What, you said you did 40 years? You did, or since 40 years, what was that for? Manslaughter. That's what I'm on parole now for. Yeah, what what, what happened there? Uh, I was on drugs, homeless, uh, living on the streets and got in the fight. And beat somebody? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Well, those are the same things that are concerning me about, you know, you this this last offense. You, you obviously you 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 drank and you used drugs and you know you whatever the charts were, you you know, you you got picked up, you know. Can, can I say something to that? Yeah, yeah, you say something. Uh, after doing the 20 plus years that I did, when I come home, it was like a, a dog that's been locked up in the, in the yard for a long time. I was going to church like I was supposed to be. I was working, I was going to see my pro officer. I, I was doing everything. I was hitting my knees every morning and every night. I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. Just one day I'm riding with the person that I go to church with and she says, I'm gonna stop and get a beer. And I said, you're gonna stop and get us both a beer. And that's, and here I am, 17 months later. I have, I have an addiction. I wasn't, I wasn't having to take a urine test. 
I wasn't having to go to no class. How long were you out for? How long were you out for on parole? Uh, like five, like five months. I was I wasn't having to go to no classes, no no drug tests or nothing like that. I mean, well, you I'm probably not, need to be. You can't. Me. How are you gonna stay sober? You've been an addict all your life, and you get out, and how are you gonna stay sober? Uh, well, what I was saying is, I I just needed a little more structure, like to go to meetings and, and be around other addicts that. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't forced into that. You understand what I'm saying? Like when I when I come home, I was just home. I didn't. Uh, th there was no. You got to take a drug test. There was no. You got to go to this. You got to go to these meetings or nothing Did you like get that. Get out on good time, or you were paroled out. Sir, you good time out? No, sir. I was paroled out. And you didn't have any stipulations on it. Okay. No, sir. Not. I mean, yeah. Uh, being in by ten thirty. Like I said, I was I was doing all that. I was every everything I was supposed to do, I was doing. So you were paroled yeah. out. You were never told to go to any NAA. You were never told to go to any type of drug treatment, anything. No, I went to uh, active recovery, and they told me I didn't I didn't have to go to no meetings or anything. I'm not I'm not listening. I, I take full responsibility for 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 my actions for drinking. That was my fault. But but I, I just feel like. I did mess up, but I don't feel like that what, what I did, because I did not put my hands on anybody. I don't feel like why, why did they why did they uh charge you with that? Uh every, everybody in the house was drunk. It was me and my son and, and his girlfriend, and they got into an argument. She had told me some uh that she went and had an abortion that day and not to tell him. I ended up telling him she was on uh, alcohol and Xanax, and it, it just it was just a bad situation. Yeah, sounds like that's a bad situation to even be going back to then. No, so that's not that's not even where I that's not where I was that's not where I was living. Where were you living? I was living with my brother. Where? How close to where to all this? I mean, pretty close, yes, huh? Yes, but. But what I'm saying is, once once I took that one drink, me being an addict, I, I I just fell all the way down. I'm not I'm not denying that. I know that. I know, I know I'm an I taught celebrating recovery in, in in prison. I was, I was the the head uh, uh, cheerleader. I had 64 inmates under me. The only person over me was the chaplain. I I know all that. Yeah, I, but I, you I, did. But it it didn't help you. Something didn't I, help you because you got back out and drank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know. But not by choice. But it's not by choice. You got a question? Do you um know how she got the uh bruises and the marks around her neck? Sir. Do you know how she got the bruises and the marks around her neck? I, I know I didn't put them there, sir. I did not touch her at and all. I why did you plead guilty to criminal mischief? Didn't you know that could violate your parole? No, sir. I, no, sir, I didn't. Uh, I, well, I you can. Guilty. The, my, the way my lawyer explained it to me was that uh, by me being there, being drunk, that that was criminal mischief. That's why I pled guilty to it. All right. All right. We'll hear from Jason uh, Morgan Jr. now. Jason, would you like to make a brief statement? Yes, sir. I would just like to say that um, I agree with him on some parts with the um, being locked up for so long and letting him come home without any rules or regulations, basically. I think he should have been released to a halfway house or at least some type of program or structure instead of just throwing him into the free world after 20 years of incarceration because, I mean, that's kind of hard to do. Even if you go for 30 days, just adjusting back to the world is, is kind of hard. So after 20 years, I couldn't imagine how hard it would be. Uh, I talked to his probation officer and she said the same thing that she would recommend the 318 program because it would like give them some type of structure or something. But um, as far as the female goes, she she's, She's had three people, three men arrested for the, the same charges. Okay. All right. Thank you for your comment. Now we'll hear from uh, 
brief statement from Jim. I can't hear you, Jim. You're on mute. All right, there we go. Right. Yep. So that's my brother. He was living with me for five years, uh, five months when he got out. And he's right. I carried him to work every morning. I got him a job in Benton. Um, I live in South Bossier. Carried him to work every day. He worked hard. The guy was very proud of the way he worked. Um, and like I said, he had that one day where he drank and he knew he was living with me. He knew that that I wasn't going to deal with that. But like, like his son said, they just kind of threw him out in the world and just kind of threw him in my arms. Like, here you go. Um, if he would have had some, he did have structure here, but if, you know, if he would have had some kind of meetings to go to and, you know, an answer to somebody, but he didn't have anybody to answer to. He just, they just kind of threw him out to, to the free world, which is like he said, it is kind of hard to do. And as far as the girl goes, I know her very personal and he's right. She has three guys in prison right now for the same charges. I know one of the attorneys that, uh, she, that represents her. She has three guys in prison over the exact same charges. Right. Um, I spoke I spoke with her several times after this and you know she don't she don't even remember what happened. She was so messed up. So but I don't know, you know. All right. Sounds like you don't need to be hanging around that girl, huh? I ain't kidding about that. All right. Would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. I just I I just beg for for another chance to just uh, I don't care if it's a work release or halfway out, anything. I know I messed up, but I, I, I know this is not what I want. And I'll do anything. I'll wear an ankle bracelet, anything, not to go back to prison. All right. Well, I think we'll play a fair to vote. I'll vote first. This is just me and only me. Uh, I vote to, uh, in lieu of revocation. I vote to uh, send you to Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. It looks like you've never really had any treatment. You need treatment. You're not... You got a manslaughter charge. You, you you have some other stuff going on. You can't drink. You're an addict. All these things, and I can, you know, keep you in there, and it's not going to do you a lot of good. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to go to Steve Hall for nine months. After you successfully complete that program, you'll have NAA meetings three times a week. You have a curfew from nine p to six a. You have random drug screens. Uh, this is your best opportunity. So you need to go sit on the front row and learn what you need to learn because this is the last opportunity you're going to have. Yes. Uh, Mr. Marabello. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's sad if what you're saying is true, that you had no structure from your parole officer. That's, that's a shame. But, but reality is you need to do it yourself. And, uh, you know, you, you paroled out. You obviously had programs while you were in prison to be able to parole out. You probably took AA meetings. You probably did some things like that. Uh, you got a disease, and you acknowledge that, and you need some help. So Steve Hoyle is going to give you the help, but but nobody, your parole officer is not going to take you by the hand and make sure you do everything you're supposed to do. You're going to have to do it yourself, okay? Your parole officer is going to have some restrictions on you. We're putting restrictions on you. We're making you go to AA meetings and things like that. But if you don't do it, if you're not willing to do it, it's not going to work, and you're going to end up doing your entire 40 years. So uh, my vote is the same. Steve Hall is an excellent program. Take advantage of it. And when you get out, then probably, hopefully sober will keep you out of the relationship that you were in the last time that got you in trouble. So good luck to you. I'm, um, I'm not going to lie, Mr. Morgan. I had to revoke you. Uh, really because you were out only five months, you got drunk, and you got the same kind of rage you got into when you killed the first fellow. But uh, I'm going to go along with my colleagues, but I'm also going to add electronic monitoring. And if you violate any condition, I'm not going to hesitate to revoke you next. Yes, sir. thank you all very much. All right, you have three votes to grant the Steve Hall Intensive Substance Abuse Program. You have NAA three times a week. You'll have curfew 9P to 6A. You have random drug screens and electronic monitors. Here's your last opportunity. Good luck to you. Thank you. And we'll adjourn at <laughs> Nope, we won't adjourn. We'll be back in a minute.
No purpose? No no Have you been in the trash app before? No, sir. How much is my car? Did you start setting it? I'm in it now. I thought before my husband. So I'm setting it That's what I was trying to say because my belief about it, like I ain't had a charge. They never did have a charge in there. They never did have a charge in there.
All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Nolan Purvis, 749736. All right, Nolan, my name is Brennan Kelsey, along with me is Mr. Marabella. Mr. Freeman will be your panel. Our pro bit hearing, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Nolan Purvis, DOC number 749736. Your second class offender, pro eligibility date 3 23 2024. Good time 110 2025. Full term 3 23 2030. Eight year sentence. Simple burglary, 10 counts, simple criminal damage, damage to property, one count. You were revoked on November 21st, 2022. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. How many years have you been down on this eight year sentence? Um, a year now. One year. And how old are you? 22. And what are, what, you, what you doing for all this? Is this drug related? What you doing with all this burglary? What's going on? Um, I was just um homeless at the time, going through stuff, and just needed like a quick source of income or something like that at the moment. And you thought quick source of income was go rob stuff, not go get a job? Well, I was working at the time. It just wasn't enough money, I, at, at, I guess, at the moment. What were you working? Where were you working? Burger King. And, and why wasn't enough money? What did you need, need to do something? You had some things to do? You got kids, a wife? What, 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 what? I got four children. Four children? Yes, sir. Three boys and one little girl. So what are you going to do to support them when you get out? Well, I'm um, planning on going to a different state. And I have, um, I'm trying to get my high set now. So I'm working to get my high set. That's a and good I'm idea. Going. What grade did you drop out of school in? Say it again, sir. What grade did you drop out of school in? Um, ninth grade. Why'd you drop out? Doing drugs and cutting up or what? I had have, I have my first son. In the ninth grade, and you just dropped out, and what did you start doing? Working or nothing, or what you do? I was working that. I was working at um, Burger King. For, for how many years you work at Burger King? I worked at Burger King like three years. <clears throat> did you do drugs and alcohol? I was I was smoking weed and stuff. Yeah, I was doing a little. Yep. Why Why did you get revoked? I had got revoked because I had um lack of address. Some different yeah. things. So what so what uh, have you taken any long-term substance abuse to help yourself out? Have you taken any treatment, any classes? I know you're working on your high set, and that's good. Have you done anything? What type of treatment? I'm, I'm in the um Steve Hall intensive substance abuse program as you speak now. You're in it right now. How many how long you been in it? Right now, two months. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I don't have any more questions. You uh, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Um, no, sir, not really. Okay. Well, my I, look, you're heading in the right direction. You're young. You need to get your high set. That's important. You need to get your GED. Working on your high set. You're in Steve Hall right now. Uh, but but you know you've done one year. You have a, a, a bad past criminal history. My vote is to deny your parole today. Keep doing your Steve Hall. You'll come up again, and you'll have your high set. You have your Steve Hall on each, and then if you're in front of me, then maybe it'll be different for me. But today, you know, with the uh, law enforcement opposition, victim opposition, you have uh, you, you need to complete Steve Hall and your high set, my, uh, and, and your poor supervision. My vote is to, to deny your parole, Mr. Freeman. Uh, Mr. Purvis, first off, when you finish Steve Hall, you're going to get more good time. So you'll be getting out probably in the middle of 2024 at the most, because if you get your GED, you even get more. But I think you do need both of them. My vote today is also to deny. Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Purvis, uh, we want to see you out, and we want to see you stay out. I agree with my colleagues. Uh, Steve Hall is where you need to be. Uh, learn as much as you can and put it in action when you get out. Good luck to you. All right, three votes to deny. Your parole's been denied, but good luck to you. Yes, sir. We'll adjourn at 931.
Or today is Tuesday, August 29th, 9 36 a.m. My name is Brendan Kelsey. I'm on me. Mr. Pete Freeman and Mr. Tony Marabella will be staff. And we'll be the we'll be the parole panel. Staff support seat at DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is the LTC. Would staff and support please introduce yourself there? Yes, sir. My name is Phyllis Jones, program coordinator. All right, Ms. Phyllis. We're ready for our first case. And okay. we've got Miss Fuller. Miss Fuller, yes, thank you. You're welcome. All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Alexandra Fuller, 359914. All right, Alexandra, you heard the introductions. We'll have a pro hearing, ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. Alexandra Fuller, DOC number 359914. You're a seventh class offender. Pro eligibility date 11. 24, 11, 25, 2023, good time 7 1, 2024, full term 5, 26, 2028. You have a six year sentence. Yes, sir. Voting prostitution, possession of Schedule 2, methamphetamine. You were revoked in 2022. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right, please answer, Mr. Marabella. Uh, Ms. Fuller, can you hear me okay? My name is Tony Marabella. Yes, sir, I can hear you. Uh, how old are you, ma'am? I'm 45. And you've been in how long on these charges? Uh, approximately 15 months. 15 months? Okay. How long have you been in prison altogether? If you had to add it up, just ballpark figure. Probably about close to eight years. Uh, could you do me a favor? Could you back up just a little bit? Because sure, yes. all I can see is your eyes. Right there is yes, silent. Okay, all that's right. good. It's perfect. Thank you. Uh, so tell me a little bit about your seventh offender. You've been in prison for uh, all, all, roughly eight years over your lifetime. Yes. Uh, tell me why. Um, I've had a problem with drugs most of my life. Um, and I've made terrible decisions and um, should have taken more steps to work towards my sobriety before now, but I didn't. Um, but I'm ready for a change. Um, it's probably taken me too long to make that decision. Now you've you've taken since you've been incarcerated this time. You've taken Louisiana Risk One and Two, and you've taken Victim Accountability. Right? Any other programs? Are you in any other programs right now? Uh, beyond trauma. Now before before you got it before you went in. Well, let me, let me back up a little bit. You've indicated on your application, although I did not see any evidence of it in your record, that you are you you completed uh, AA, and you also say that you completed Celebrate Recovery, but I didn't see any proof of that. Um, I was going to Celebrate Recovery classes. I have not completed it. No, but I'm taking some Celebrate Recovery classes. Are you in Celebrate Recovery right now? No, sir. You're not? No, I took them when I was in Caldwell before I came here. Ah, okay, okay. I still don't see it anywhere on your on your on your your history that that you took anything uh, like that because that's an excellent program. So all you've taken now while you've been there is victim accountability and uh, Louisiana risk one and two. Yes. Sir. So tell me about your drug problem. How long you been using drugs? Um, probably about twenty five years. What do you use? Methamphetamine. And how often will you use it? Every day. How far did you go in school? I have my GED. When did you get your GED? In 2003. Have you ever had a real job on the outside? Yes, sir. I have a house cleaning business that I own. But, um, it's pretty successful. And I've um, done other things. I've, uh, manage restaurants and stuff like that. Well, why do you keep going back to, to committing crime? I mean, th this, tell me about this prostitution business. How'd you get into that? Stupid decision, but um, to support my drug habit. 
So what what's what do you think the answer is? My answer, um, I have a sobriety plan in place, and what's your sobriety plan? Um, I'm going to go to NA meetings and get a sponsor, and get in the church community. And Why didn't you do that before? Classes. I started to, but I didn't finish. Um, kind of my drug problem. Now you have two children. How old are your children? I have one that's 26 and one that's 13. Boys, girls, what? Eight boys, sorry, two boys. Do you have any relationship with them? Yes, I do, yes. Where's your youngest now? Where my youngest is young? with my father. You're gonna be getting out in July. Uh, is your coordinator, the, the, the program coordinator, still in the room with you? Yes, yes sir. What, what substance abuse programs do y'all have there that she could enroll in and take uh, fairly quickly? Um, nothing that's quick. Um, well, I, I, but when I say quick, that she can get into fairly soon. Oh, okay. We have a living in balance. Okay. Um, and that one should be starting up pretty soon. We, um, Do you have some great recovery there? No, sir. Do you have any NA and NA uh, trainings? No. How long is living in balance? Six months. Okay. That's one and two, or is that just one? That's one and two. Okay. All right. Okay. Would you be willing to... to to go into that, because if you would get into that program, by the time you finish that program, you get some good time, you'd be out. Of course. All right. That's all I've got. Would y'all like to make any comments, staff, or, uh, at all? No, uh, sir. You're good. All right. Thank you. Mr. I uh, will speak to Hunter Sanson. Can you make a brief statement, Hunter? Son here. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay, great. We can hear you. Um, I just want to add that I feel that my mom grew up in some unfortunate circumstances that I also ran across in my life experience too. But I feel like she's a strong enough person to overcome those things for the better of her life. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Ms. Fuller, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes. Um, I know that I've made some poor decisions in the past, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to make a change. Like I said, I have a sobriety plan to whenever I get out for the NA and celebrate recovery and get a sponsor and take parenting classes and um, get in the church community. And... Um, I want to thank you for giving me this meeting today and this chance. And um, and I just pray that you will give me a chance to become a better mother, a better daughter, and a better person, and a more productive member of society. All right, thank you. How fair to vote, Mr. Marabella? Uh, Ms. Fuller, uh, based upon the fact that you've got a, a, a release date coming up fairly soon, uh, and it, you're, you're a, a moderate risk, but you're a high needs for substance abuse and, and treatment. You've had poor supervision history. Uh, my vote today is going to be to grant uh, conditioned upon your completing a significant substance abuse program. That could be, if all they've got there is, is living in balance, then, then perhaps uh, that's what it needs. But you're going to be getting out regardless. And if I don't put some conditions on you and make you go to some programs, then you're doomed to fail again. So that would be that would be my vote. And when you get out, three AA meetings per week, uh, curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., and report at least uh, weekly to your parole officer for the first 90 days. Mr. Freeman, just one vote. Good luck to you. Okay. Um... She does have a, uh, a good time date in July of next year. She takes those classes. She would probably be out 
uh, in May of next year. So uh, my vote is to deny, as I think she needs more program. All right, we'll vote to grant, we'll vote to deny. So we'll vote to grant your parole after completing living in balance one and two. You have to complete that. <laughs> when you're released, you'll have NAA three times a week. You'll have to report to your PO weekly for the first 90 days, and you'll have curfew from 9P to 6A. Do you understand the stipulation? Two votes to grant, one to deny. Your parole has been granted after successful completion of living in balance one and two. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what are you talking about? I don't I don't know if 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 I don't You know what's going on with my family won't give me an album. He gives me the camera, it won't give me the volume. He gives me the volume on the camera. Thank you. I know. Remember, I called them the last time. They said they've done a long time. They asked to do the video. For what? You saw them. Oh. How did you do it? Alexander went first. Um, yeah, thank you. She's got to get living down. All right, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number. Donna Renee Naples, 468474. All right, Donna, my name is Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Maribel and Mr. Freeman. We'll be your panel, explain the process to you, read information to the record, have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. Do you understand the process? Yes, sir. Donna Maples, DOC number 468474. You're a third class offender. Parole eligibility date 131 2023. Not eligible for good time. Full term 8 1 2033. 
15 year sentence. Possession of Xanax, methamphetamines, Xanax, heroin. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Looks like you were revoked on, in 2023. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. How long have you been incarcerated on this 15 year sentence? Um, a total of almost five years. Huh? Almost five years. Almost five years. <clears throat> When's your last disciplinary write up? Um, I haven't had any. So, what's going on? You're a drug addict or what? Yes, yeah, sir. Because you've been in and out of jail. You've, had, you've been uh, revoked. You just recently got revoked in 2023. What was that for? Um, I had to use Kratom instead of, I had a lot of pain and I didn't want to take the pain medicine from the dentist. So, I went, thought it was a better way and took Kratom, not knowing that I couldn't take it. So what do you currently do to improve yourself? Are you in any programs right now? What's going on? Um, I've been writing for classes at this facility since I've gotten here in December. But because of my time so lengthy, they haven't placed me in any or even assessed me. But I do have a job that I've been working since March, the beginning of March. What job? I work in the warehouse. Okay. So you hadn't had any drug treatment, any type of anything for your drug addiction, for your problem? Not at this current facility, but back when I was at... Um, you had some before, before you got revoked again, before you had the problem again. I know you've had some before, correct? Yes, sir. And you hadn't had any rights this, this go round, but you've had some before, correct? What, right up? Yes, no, sir. I've never had any write-ups. Never had any write-ups. Okay. Um, so what's your plans if you'd be relieved, released? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Well, my original plan was to go back to Covington, Louisiana, and live with my mother. But she recently passed um, not two weeks ago. So... That's not going to be, you know, good for me. I know that, you know, to go back to that house, plus they're trying to sell it to get things worked out for my um, children and whatever the will states. Right. But I plan on going to sober living, and I spoke with the work, spoke with some of the ladies here, and they told me after I find out what's going on, they'll help me locate a facility and get me placed. So that's that's my initial plan. And my brother, um, I recently started talking to him again after 22 years. It took the passing of my mother to make that happen. But and he's supportive and, you know, wants me to get out and do the right thing. My children are the same way. Um, my mom would have been here to speak up for me, but, you know, due to her passing, it's just, it's been a whirlwind these last couple of weeks, but I mean, yes. stay focused and not using drugs at this facility and just, you know, doing positive self-help when I can. What kind of work did you do out when you were out? Did you do any kind of work? Oh, Real? Yeah, sir. I did um, home health and then I worked as cashier. Um, I worked at Home Depot to where I plan on going back to work when I get out. They knew the situation when they hired me. And they told me once after I turned myself in to let them know when everything was done and over with and I can go back to my job. All right. And do you have a mental health problem at all? Any type of mental health issues? Yes, sir. What I you got? I'm bipolar. And I also... I take my medicine regularly now, and that makes a huge difference with me. So that's one were you, thing. Were you taking it while you were out there, or you weren't taking it? Um, I was taking it off, off and on. I let myself slip sometimes because I felt I got better, but I know now like that has to be a consistent thing, and I feel right. better, I yeah. feel better generally every day taking it and knowing that I don't have to go, you know, back into that dark place. Staff have any input for me there? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Freeman has a question. Uh, I noticed when you were uh, 
vote, you were charged and looks like St. Mary for failing to appear for a multiple bill hearing and contraband into a municipal or parish prison. It was in St. Tammany Parish, and that was when I turned myself in. I called my parole officer to turn myself in for missing my parole, um, my bill hearing, because I was scared of the time I was facing. At that time, I didn't know all the ins and outs of it, but I called my parole officer and turned myself in, and at that time, I forgot I had one of my own prescription medications on me that I didn't take yet that morning. So when I got there, that's how that came into play. How many pills was it? It was one, sir. So. All right. Would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Um, I know it's hard, like, looking at my record and seeing everything I've been through. But when I was in Jetson, I got a lot of, a lot of, out, I got a lot out of all the classes I took. I gained a lot of certifications. Um, when I went home, I stayed. I was. This is the best I've ever been. And my mother, I just wish you, you could have talked to her because she would be able to attest to that because she was finally proud of me. She seen the changes in me. She knew that she had her old daughter back, you know, and that my life was going in the right direction. And it was just for the simple fact that I had to face the multiple bill hearing that um, even back in this situation, but it's nobody's fault but my own. This is the consequences of my actions, just as well as I hurt my family and my friends. Like I said, me and my brother has been estranged for probably over 22 years, and it took this tragedy to recently have us talking again, and that's that means the world to me and just shows that what I can gain out of doing the right things and my children too. It's just, there's so much I gained in those few months I was out that I didn't realize that I was losing before. And I found myself again, and that's just not something I'm willing to lose. I have two boys out there that I know are struggling and I need to get back out there with them and rebuild our relationship because all those relationships were harmed due to my addiction. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll vote first. My vote today, you just being revoked as quick as you have, my vote is to deny your parole today. But I'm going to ask the facility there you have a moderate Tiger score, you, you, you just were revoked, you, you, you're, you know, third class offender. You're doing good with your mental health, but I'd like to ask staff there to put her in some classes. I'd like for her to take living in balance. Thank you for a change. Do y'all have those classes? Yes, sir. Okay. I want, I want staff, I want y'all to put her in some of those classes. Put her, uh, I know she's had a problem doing it. Continue to request stuff. Do you have a GED, you said? I have a high school diploma. High school diploma. Okay. But my vote today is to deny you pro uh, due to the poor supervision of uh, law enforcement opposition, moderate tiger, but I request you be put in some classes. Mr. Uh, Mayor Bell. My vote is likewise the same for the same reasons. Good luck to you, ma'am. Mr. Freeman. Three votes to deny. Your pearls been denied. Good luck to you. Thank you. I just want to see that. the <laughs>
Please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Brandy Pareto, 570435. All right, Brandy, my name is Brendan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Marabella and Mr. Freeman will be your panel. We'll explain the process to you, read some information to the record, have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. We have Mr. Randy Meyer who will speak at the appropriate time and Ms. Cheryl P. Williams who will speak at the appropriate time. Thank you guys for being here. Randy Pareto, DOC number... Five, seven, zero, four, yeah, I got it. I'm just, I'm trying to pull up my... Pull up my phone. Oh, my apologies. Uh, 570435, your fifth class offender of parole eligibility date 12 20 2022. Not eligible for good time, full term 4 8 2025. Your three, it's a three year sentence. Monetary instrument abuse, uh, multiple counts, possession of methamphetamines. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Please answer, Mr. Freeman. Okay. Uh, how old are you, Ms. Pareto? I'm 40 years old. Okay. And uh, what's your educational level? I'm um, a GED. <laughs> and what, uh, how long have you been served on this charge? Um, about 20 months. Um, Y'all threatened counterfeit money. What was the counterfeit money? What you were going to use it for? Um, I was using illegal drugs, and um, I just printed the money on paper, and I was caught with it. So you were printing the money to buy drugs? Yes, sir. Consider yourself a drug addict? Yes, sir. What kind of treatment have you taken or what, what are you doing now with regards to your drugs? I'm currently um, enrolled in a substance abuse class. Um, I've participated in the New Beginnings class as well as the Louisiana Opiate Recovery uh, MAP program. Um, and I'm still in the MAP program. How long before you would complete the MAP program? Um, hey. I, I'm Haley Jones. I facilitate, yes, I facilitate hey. the MAP program here. Um, she was in um, Jetson with Maya on the mm -hmm. same program for about two and a half months, and then she's she's been she's been in this one about a month and a half. So basically, she's done with the short term. It's either three months to a year, um, but. Um, she has completed the short term and she's also going to be doing the Vivitrol when she leaves. I wanted to know. So, yeah. Okay, it. so uh, 
Would you recommend that she take the long term? Um, I mean, she has I a mean, bad, bad drug history. Yeah, she does. And I believe this shot is, she's been doing really, really good in the program. And Maya, she did really good in the program over there. I believe that, um, you know, she would she would do well. I, I do believe she would do well, and if she she's beginning, I believe they did in the beginning. Yeah, program. this isn't the pro only program she's been in, so she's been had a bunch of um, programming. Right, I, I, I see that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank okay, you. uh, I see you'd have three revocations. Uh, why you think I should give you a chance? Tell me why. Um. I have been fully committed to my recovery. I've never, in, you know, in my past, I always tried to figure out ways to make things better, to hide what I was doing, to change from one drug to another. I'm truly sober today. I'm clean. I'm committed to being sober. You know, you wake up in jail, you're 40 years old, you're doing the same thing you've done time and time again, and nothing's changing in my life. The only thing that I could figure to change is to completely be committed to staying drug free. My support system, my mother, my stepfather, um, a few other people in my family, when I look at them, they're successful in life. They do not use drugs. And I know, I know that that's my downfall. I know that this is my problem. And I want better for my life. I want better for my children. Uh, I've just carried this on for too long. I'm ready. I've made a change in my life, and I'm ready to prove myself outside of here. Okay. Uh, so uh, what's going to be your sobriety plan when you get out? Um, I've been referred to Avenues Recovery Center in Covington, Louisiana, uh, for IOP services. I've also connected uh, by Zoom with a counselor. I have Ms. Mills through Catholic Charity who um, also has a case management. Um, she's helping me with my driver's license. Uh, a lot of things that I need to succeed in life and to be committed uh, to my What's life. the name of the program in Covington? Uh, Avenues Recovery Center. Avenue to Recovery? Are they, yeah. they continue you on the Vivid, Vivid trial? Yes, sir. And um, I will also continue to work with Miss Haley. I have all of her contact information, so she does um, aftercare as well. Okay. Um, you hadn't had any write-up. You uh, your risk is high, and your needs are high. Uh, as I've stated, I think everybody realizes you have a terrible substance abuse problem. And, and if we don't stop it, you end up uh, doing something crazy or getting into trouble to where uh, it's not going to be these three, four year sentences. It's going to be a life. And are you going to injure somebody? Yes, sir. And that's the path that you are headed down. Um, prison doesn't have much left to offer. I mean, you, you've taken pretty much everything we have in our control. So uh, is, uh, well, the lady already spoke on your behalf. I have no further questions. Oh, okay, we'll hear from Ms. Uh, Cheryl Williams. You're on mute. Okay, okay. Am, I, am I unmuted? Okay. Are you now? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and make your statement. Um, I feel that uh, my daughter, um, as long as she comes home and um, continues her sobriety out with classes and meetings and so forth, um, I think she could 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 make it out here. Um, and I just really would love her to get back in her children's lives and lives and. Um, and succeed out here with us. Okay, thank you. Now we're here for Mr. Randy Meyer. Good morning, Randy Meyer, Assistant DA in Jefferson Parish. Um, concerned about Mr. Ms. Peretta 
And I think like all of us, we want her to succeed. Um, you know, the path she's on could lead to her death. And that's something none of us want. Our like, well, family doesn't want that. She doesn't want that. We don't want that. We want her to be able to succeed. Um, if uh, Mr. Freeman indicated that, that she's done pretty much all of the programs that the DOC has to offer her, um, she seems like she's getting on the right track. I would suggest if the uh, board is considering um, a grant that she be given some pretty strict, um, you know, some strong restrictions to help her to maintain her sobriety. That, that's what she needs to do. Um, and if, if she doesn't, she's probably better off in jail. Uh, that's all the comments I have. All right, thank you. Right, Brandy, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Um, yes, sir. Um, when I became addicted to drugs, I, you know, I found myself to be everything that I was raised not to be. I lied, I cheated, I stole. Um, I was at a point in my life where I, I couldn't stop. Um, but I knew in my heart I couldn't carry on with my way of living. Um, I was arrested. And uh, as my mind started to clear and I was in recovery and I started to sober up, I, you know, I started to have a deep desire to change. Um, you know, all the feelings that I numb for so long, they were just hitting me left and right. And I knew that I had to deal with them. I had to cope with the things that I had been through. Um, I lost my brother to the same drugs that I was using. It's just, it's been a tough road, but I want better for myself and my children. Um, you know, words can't really express the remorse that I feel inside. And I feel like an apology doesn't justify anything that I did or any of my behaviors. But I am truly sorry to my family, to my children, to everyone that I've heard. Um, and I feel like there's only so much you can say when you repeatedly messed up your life so much. And I'm just at a point like I really want to prove myself. I want to stay active in my recovery, and that's what I plan on doing. All right, thank you. Pam, fair to vote, Mr. Freeman. Okay. Um, as I stated, you, you, you're down to your last gas. I mean, it, this, this, I mean, there's nothing else can happen. Huh? I mean, and I would fully expect that if you ever commit another drug offense or any crime, that you know, you're going to receive a lot of time and probably be a habitual offender, which you at this point would deserve. Yes, so my recommendation today is to grant, because I don't think we can do much more with you in prison, grant and you go to the program in Covington and continue with your Vivitrol. Yes, sir. You have a curb for you from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., with electronic monitoring through the probation office, they'll provide the unit and you go to three AA meetings a week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Marabella. Uh, my vote would be likewise the same. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. I should have two votes to grant. Also, I'm going to vote to grant your parole. I want you to go to the uh, avenue for, to, for recovery in Covington. You want to stay with the Vivitrol. You want to have NAA. Three times a week, electronic monitoring and curfew from 9p to 6a. Do you understand stipulations? Yes, sir, I do. All right, three of us to grant. Rose been granted. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. I get y'all mute. Brittany Womack, 767-468. All right, Brittany, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Tony Marabella. And Ms. Mr. Pete Freeman will be your panel. Have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement or take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir, I do. Brittany Womack, DOC number 767-468. You're a first-class offender. Parole eligibility date 7-2-2023. Not eligible for good time. Full term 11 2 2024, two year sentence, coronal knowledge with juvenile. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. You were revoked on March 14, 2023. Please answer, Mr. Maribel. Uh, good morning, Ms. Womack. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. How old are you, ma'am? I'm 33. Okay. And how long have you been in prison on these charges? You were revoked in March, but how long have you been in? Uh, Altogether, I've done 10 months on this charge. I'm sorry? Altogether, I've done 10 months. 10 months. Okay, thank you. Tell me a little bit about your educational background. How far did you go in school? Um, 11th grade. Did you ever get your GED? No. You ever tried? Um, I'm on the waiting list here. Uh, yeah, so. Let's talk a little bit about your drug use. When did you start using drugs? I started using drugs six years ago, and it was um, a massive impact on my life. Uh, it changed a lot. Let, let's slow down. Let's talk specifically about your drugs. Six years ago, when did you, why did you start using drugs at, uh, what were you, 26, 27? Yes, sir. I started why did you using drugs at that age? I started using drugs. Uh, I met my child's father. He was a drug addict. Um, I was curious, and I started using drugs with him, and I and ever since then, I've been wanting to get clean. What did you start using? Meth. And how often were you using meth? Every day. Have you ever had any treatment on the outside? Yes, sir, I have. When I get out of here, I plan on doing IOP. No, 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 not when you get out, before you came in. Have you ever had any treatment on the outside? Yes, sir. What kind of treatment? Uh, a 30-day rehab. All right. And when was that? Uh, that was uh, last September. Now, you have actually two charges. You had two charges. You had drug charges, and then you had the coronal knowledge charge. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the coronal knowledge charge. Who was this young 14-year-old boy? What relationship to you was he? Um, he was uh, one of my daughter's friends' boyfriends. One of my daughter's friends. Your daughter's friends. So how how does how old were you when you started this relationship? It happened one time, and it was uh, I caught the charge about three years ago, okay. about two years ago, twenty one. So how, how is it that you started a relationship at what thirty years old with a fourteen year old boy? I was on drugs. Um, it was a one time thing. I regret it every day. I made a bad choice. I made a bad decision. There's some indication in the in the file that you had suggested at one point that you were pregnant from him. Is that a fact, or is that uh, do you remember even saying that? No, I didn't. I don't don't recall saying. I have my tubes tied. I can't get pregnant. Okay. Well, there was there was some discussion back and forth on Facebook or something where you said that. Is that true or not true? That's not true. So significantly is your drug use. Is that right? Yes. Now, you were never you never really were sent to jail on either of these charges. You were given probation on both charges. Uh, I, did because, on, I did 18 months on my uh, drug charge. You did do 18 months on your drug charge? Yes. I got did out of jail. Did you take any programs while you were in prison on your drug charge? Um, I wasn't offered any because I did my time in the city in the in the parish. I got you. classes. Uh, I'm in Miss Haley's drug. Uh, uh, I'm in a substance abuse class now. Okay. 
Now, let, let's, let me finish my questions and then you can talk, okay? I know you're anxious to tell us about what you're doing and that's okay, all right? Okay. Uh, you got revoked because basically you absconded. Why? Why did you keep running away? Why did you keep not reporting to your parole officer? Bottom line, I have a I had a drug problem. I I'd get high and I wouldn't want to go see her. Um, it's all because of drugs. And that's just I got that's how that's my most honest answer I can give you is my. Now you have three problem. children, is that right? Yes, I do. Where are your children? With my mother. Okay. How old are your children? Um, I have a sixteen-year-old, a fourteen-year-old, and a five-year-old. Same father. Yes. Okay. Now you said he was a drug addict. Yes. Is he still a drug addict? I mean, is he's, he still on drugs, or where is he now? He's doing time right now himself. Now let's talk a little bit about the program that you're doing. Uh, you're in the MAC program now. Yes, sir. I am. I and I plan on taking the Vivitrol shot when I get out. Okay. Now my records reflect that you started that on August the seventh. Is that true? Uh, you start before that. It sounds about right. Yes. Okay. And uh, tell me about the program so far. Tell me what you've done so far with the program. Miss um, Haley, she's given me um, the tools to 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 get back into society to be able to use when I get out. Um, I found myself in that program. Um, I feel like um, I have a good shot. She shot, uh, taught me about the Vivitrol shot. I didn't know about that Vivitrol shot beforehand. Um, so I'm definitely going to take that. I'm going to get a sponsor, go to meetings, get accountability part, uh, team going. I, I see a good future and I have hope. Have you ever gone to AA meetings before? No, I haven't. No, I have. I really didn't know about, uh, like I said, I didn't know that I didn't have the tools before I did Miss Haley's class. I didn't really know much about the, uh, the AA program and what was all offered until now. May I speak to your program director? Yes, yes, sir. Hi. Uh, tell me a little bit about the MAC program that she's in now and how long a program is it? Because I think she needs a pretty long-term uh, program. So tell me, tell me what she's in and how long that program would be. Um, I think she's been in there about a month. A month. Right. I show August the seventh as as the date she started. Yeah, okay, so it's anywhere. It's it doesn't start or end. It's an ongoing group. It's a therapeutic group, and we offer all different bit, kind of programs for recovery and kind of introduce it to them. We also have workbooks that they work on. Um, but three months is the short term. Six months is the long term. Okay. And then, you know, when they get out, we continue to work with them, um, like through peer support. I try to get them in. So a lot of them, I send them to a sober living houses. But um, um, her situation is a little different. But, um, yeah, I, the program. How is her situation a little different? Sir? Why, why do you say her situation is a little different? Because of the children or what? Yeah, because of her talk. Where she would live. The, the requirement that she have to register as a sex right, offender. Right. Uh, but when she leaves the program, you would give her basically an aftercare program to follow up on and such? Yeah, I get them set up with like mental health, um, IOP if they need it. I connect them in the community wherever they're going to whatever they got to offer there. Um, and I'll, they're shot, of course, to keep that way. Is she taking the Vivitrol shot now, or is that something in the future? We don't, this prison doesn't allow it until the day they leave to get it. I got you. Or they can get the naltrexone, the pill, three months before their release date. Good. Okay. And where would you be living at, Ms. Womack? Uh, would you go to a sober living facility if we could find one for you? Because you've got a... You know, there are certain places you can't live as a sex offender. Where, 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 where would you uh, hopefully be living? Well, I had planned to live with my with my father, but um, to get on my feet and to get a job. But if if y'all suggest a sober living house, I'm up for any kind of positive uh, 
any kind of positive thing. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to living in a sober living. I, I had made plans to live with my father uh, to get on my feet. He would take me back and forth to work, take me back and forth to meetings. But um, I wouldn't just say no to a sober living. Um, I'm ready to get out and, and prove a point and to use my tools to society and become a productive citizen in today's world. So I'm up for anything. Okay. And, and you intend on taking the Vivitrol shot? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, that's all. All right. Would you like to make a brief comment on your behalf? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I want yeah. to start out by saying I'm sorry to the victim and family, and I'm sorry to my family as well. I, Brittany Womack, want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be considered for early parole. Believe it or not, I'm grateful for the months that I have been incarcerated because it has given me the chance to see and realize how my poor choices have led me down to the road to destruction and how it affected my family. I admit that I abandoned my children and I'm not okay with that. If given the opportunity to be released on early parole, I would like for one of my parole stipulations to be that I check into an outpatient drug program because I fully recognize that I need help with my addiction and I can't do it alone. My plans upon release are to follow up with the Vivitol shot, get a job, become a productive citizen, and to be a positive role model and parent to my young children while keeping God first in any and everything that I do. I refuse to be another statistic by making prison a revolving door. And to do this, I know I need to make changes in my life, and that change starts with me. So, again, I thank you for the opportunity to start over. Thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, Mayor Bell. Okay. Uh, Ms. Womack, uh, it, it looks like most of your problems, most of your legal problems, have been caused by drugs. It's something that uh, you've been pretty honest about today. Uh, my vote today is going to be grant conditionally upon your completing the long-term MAC program that you are currently in. Uh, and then uh, once you finish that program to follow all of their recommendations, which would include the sober living facility. And if for some reason they can't find an approved sober living facility, if they approve where you suggest your secondary place would be your father, then that would be uh, sufficient as well. Uh, and then to follow all of their recommendations, which will include at least three AA meetings per week, uh, a curfew from six, from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., and uh, reporting to your parole officer at least uh, once uh, weekly for the first nine days. Yes, sir. I'm just one. So good luck to you. Mr. Freeman. Uh, I concur. I right, two votes to grant. I'm also going to vote to grant your parole after you've completed the long-term MAT program that you're currently in. You need to definitely complete that. You'll uh, be released and you'll have a report to your PO weekly for the first 90 days. You'll have go to a sober living facility. You will have NAA three times a week. You will have uh, curfew 9P to 6A and you'll follow up with the Vivitrol medical treatment, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Three votes yes, great. Both been granted. Good luck to you. Thank you. And we'll adjourn the LTCW 1038. Thank you.
Video and pearls call to order today is August the 29th, Tuesday, 9.42 a.m., 10.42 a.m. My name is Brennan Kelsey. I'm be Pete Freeman. Tony Marabella will be a panel. Staff and support is either the DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our, staff, our remote location is Orleans Parish. Would staff there please introduce yourself? Good morning, parole board. This is Deputy C. Tate, and I have with me here Mr. Larry Thomas. All right, thank you. We're ready for our first case. Please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Larry Thomas, 325020. Right, Larry. You heard the introduction. We have a parole revocation hearing. I'll read some rule violations. You'll plead guilty, not guilty, guilty with a statement, not guilty with a statement. We'll ask you some questions. You can respond. At the end, you can make a statement. We'll take a vote. You understand the process? Yes, sir. We have Mr. Matt uh, Kellner, who will be attorney, who will speak at the appropriate time, and Mr. Brian Lars here, who will speak at the appropriate time. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, can you read and write, sir? Yes, sir. You have a parole revocation questionnaire in front of you? No, sir. Okay, let's put it up on the screen here. That's a parole revocation questionnaire. Is that your signature at the bottom? Can't see it. That's it? The one that I had, yes, sir. Yeah, that's your, that's your signature at the bottom? Yes, sir. That's right. All right. All right, Larry Thomas, DOC number 325020. Um, Rule number four on 5-11-2023, you were arrested by the New Orleans Police Department and charged with second degree rape. The New Orleans Police, the New Orleans Parish Docket Master under MAG hashtag 604514 stated the charge was refused by the Orleans DA's office on 7-10-2023. How do you plead? I plead not guilty. Okay. All right, would you answer uh, Mr. Freeman, please? Okay, Mr. Thomas, um, let's just get down to the facts of the case. Okay, you met Miss Hooker, correct? No, no, sir. She wasn't a hooker. No, her name. Oh. What, was her name? <laughs> what was her name? Iris. Iris Hooker? <laughs> okay, you <laughs> met Miss Iris Hooker. Yes, sir. You spent the night at her house, correct? Correct. <clears throat> Uh, she willfully let you spend the night at her house, correct? Correct, sir. Uh, did y'all have sex? No, sir. So you're claiming no intercourse. What about the text messages? Explain them. That was my girlfriend texting her, trying to find out did me and her have sex. She was texting her like as if she was me. Okay. I, I called yeah. her at 3 o'clock in the morning texting Miss Hooker. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the DA has refused these charges? Yes, sir. Uh, we waiting on, uh, they said the only way they'll pick them back up is if they get a results of a rape kit with your semen? I don't know nothing about that. They're not going to get no, no, no rape kit with no results, though. I know that. Okay, well, that's what they, they they dropped the charges, but they said they would bring them back if they uh if the kid came back positive, saying that y'all did have sex. Okay, uh, so that's all the questions. Okay, I had. great. We hear from Mr. Brian Lars. <clears throat> yes. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Lars. I'm a social worker employed by the Arlene's Public Defender's Office. Uh, I just want to make note of a few things. Uh, uh, Larry doesn't have any sex-related charges uh, associated with in his history. And uh, I just want to say uh, to the board that our office has done an in-depth investigation surrounding these allegations. And we feel very confident that uh, Larry is innocent. Um, but with every uh, every case that I deal with with my clients, uh, you know, I always uh, help try to help them see what part they played in any situation that they find itself in, and uh, and I think uh, Larry agree uh, with me that uh, you know he he can uh, work on being more independent, you know, because if he worked on those on being more independent. 
you know, he wouldn't find himself in this type of situation. So, uh, so, so I developed, me and Larry developed a reentry plan. And I think that uh, this plan would address his needs to build on his independence. Uh, we work closer with first 72 plus where, you know, Larry can, uh, can uh, receive some mentoring and participate in peer support groups and learn coping and life skills. Along with working with myself, you know, I'll be uh, actively case managing Larry's case. Uh, you know, uh, also uh, Larry has a, uh, uh, you know, secured housing with a long-term friend. He's known for over 40 years. So he'll be returning uh, to, to a healthy living environment. And he also uh, can return back to work uh, at uh, automotive uh, in detail and uh, 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 employment that's uh, located near his residence. So, uh, yeah, we feel confident. You know, we've done an in-depth investigation on this. Uh, we've, we feel strongly, you know, about uh, Larry's innocence. And, uh, you know, this, you know, we'll be definitely... Uh, I'll be definitely working with Larry to help him build his independent skills and, you know, help him to progress moving forward. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Kellner, would you like to make a statement? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I would just like to supplement a couple of the, the written materials from Mr. Larson, Mr. Thomas's comments. Um, first, just to say that uh, even with the circumstances of the case, Mr. Thomas sincerely regrets that he has to come before you all. And as Mr. Lars said, that this is to some degree the result of his unhealthy lifestyle and uh, relationship choices. As Mr. Lars laid out, Mr. Thomas has taken steps since his incarceration to separate himself from the relationship that was at the root of these allegations. He'll be moving out of the city, away from the temptations of New Orleans to Kenner, close to his workplace. And uh, his uh, future involvement with the city of New Orleans will be it seems limited to uh, interacting with Mr. Lars, my office, and the first 72 plus for support. So he'll have a, a totally independent uh, life set up for him. He'll be able to hopefully go back to gainful employment and he'll have a strong support system there. The second point I would like to emphasize relates to uh, the facts of his case. And I'd be happy to answer any specific questions you all have. I recognize this is not uh, a trial or, or anything like that. And out of respect for the, the young woman's uh, privacy in this case, yeah, I'm happy to keep these remarks brief. Mr. Thomas does sincerely regret that she was wrapped up into this uh, by his actions and by the relationship, but he has maintained his innocence from the start. That's been recognized by the local prosecuting authority, and uh, we understand, as is their right, if there is inculpatory uh, physical evidence that corroborates the allegations, then they have they reserve that right to bring the charges back. But I think their decision to refuse the charges speaks volumes to what actually happened. Um, I could also speak from personal experience. Mr. Thomas's now ex-girlfriend, um, we'll call her JD, came into my office shortly after his arrest. Um, she spoke with me and an investigator at length. And what she told us was at the time this incident happened, she and Mr. Thomas had been feuding. Uh, they had gotten into an argument. She had told Mr. Thomas to leave her house. That was the night he spent uh, with the, the alleged victim in this case. Uh, when he came back at her invitation, his ex-girlfriend's invitation, she was still frustrated and harbored suspicions about what had happened. And she told me that uh, while he was asleep, she accessed his phone. She indicated that uh, she it, there was no passcode on the phone, and so she had free access to it. And she admitted sending text messages. My office has also spoken with several of Mr. Thomas's friends, in particular his sister, uh, who lives locally, and Miss Jolene Wallace, who's one of the individuals who will house him upon his release. And in the aftermath of, of this incident, the text message that were sent to the alleged victim, they also received text messages from Mr. Thomas's phone indicating along the lines of, I'm with JD, uh, please don't contact me, messages that Mr. Thomas did not send, messages that his ex-girlfriend did send. There's this sort of pattern of behavior. It's extremely unfortunate that it caught this innocent young woman up, that she had to be involved in a police investigation. Uh, Mr. Thomas, everyone involved in the case deeply regrets that that's the case, uh, but it, it still speaks to Mr. Thomas's innocence, and it's unfortunate that he has to come before the board as a result of uh, these allegations that he did not commit. So I'd be happy to answer any further questions. Uh, great, thank you. All right, Mr. Uh, Thomas, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. Yeah. Your Honor, I was 
caught up bad in this situation and I am not a rapist. I come from a family of five sisters, a mother and I have a daughter of my own. I was taught better than that. And I would have never done anything to hurt that woman. It's just that my girlfriend, she was so obsessed to where she fell along with the program to get me caught up to get rid of me. And here I am sitting in here three and a half months for something I didn't done. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Sound fair to vote, Mr. Freeman? Uh, yeah, my vote today is to do not revoke and add the special condition that you go by the first 72 and follow any of their recommendations and that you stay away from this Irish hooker. Yes, All right, sir. no contact whatsoever. Yes, sir. All right, Mayor Bella. Uh, let me ask you one question before I vote. Your lawyer said ex-girlfriend, you said girlfriend. What is it? Ex. X, X, right. X, definitely X. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just, uh, just checking your judgment there. So uh, do it then. No more, sir. All right, my vote would be likewise the same. So good luck to you, sir. And I vote do not revoke as well. The return of supervision. Three votes do not revoke. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. The will adjourn. Ten fifty three, Orleans. Yes, sir. Thank you all.